this uh, next presentation is uh, an extension of uh, uh, last year's presentation that uh, Adrian Marsh uh, gave, and he's going to go a lot deeper into uh, some of these concepts. And uh, of course, a Adrian is uh, the founder of uh, AM uh, Innovations, and his website is am-innovations.com. And it's uh, there, there's a lot of uh, links on there. There's a lot of papers. I think copies of PowerPoints. There's videos. And so a lot of the work that he's been doing over the years is showcased on there. So a lot of this related work, uh, the vector network analyzer stuff, even his uh, MWO uh, analysis, and uh, all that is uh, freely available on there. So um, you, you can check that out. And I don't know if you have a mailing list or something. or. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of resources on there. Uh, this past uh, is it April or so, uh, Adrian was here for about a month and was working with uh, Eric Dollard, myself, and uh, a lot of the focus was getting this audio uh, modulator bay done, a little bit of the uh, radio frequency rack done, and kind of doing this, this hybrid, which you kind of saw the larger uh, flame speaker. And again, it's not just for entertainment. It's kind of a universal system that's being put together to do all kinds of experiments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's a it's a quite a bit more powerful than okay. the previous system too. And so this this will be broken into three parts. Um, Adrian will do go go through a PowerPoint first. We're going to take maybe ten minute, fifteen minute break or something, and then part two will be demonstration. Yep. So you'll do the demonstration part, and then we'll take another maybe five, ten minute break. And then the second part of the demonstration. And then second part of the demonstration. And so we'll go till um, till noon, uh, and that's we'll, when we'll uh, break for lunch. And so uh, let's get started. Okay. Please welcome uh, Adrian, Adrian Marsh. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Sound good? here and I'm really going to be focusing down on the details that experimenters, experimenters need to know in order to be able to produce this kind of discharge reliably and, and then experiment with it. I'm also going to be taking the aspect from the point of view of the real work of nature. So for those of you that were in my first presentation at the beginning of the conference, I'm going to be joining some of those things together as well as we go through. So, well, here we are, this is the kind of discharge that we're talking about. It's very unusual. It's not what you normally see um, from a Tesla coil on, uh, on YouTube. And the center picture is, is also the um, setup in my Nikola Tesla. So throughout space, there is energy. Is this energy static or kinetic? If static, our hopes are in vain. If kinetic, and this we know it is for certain, then it is a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very real work of nature. I think we all know that. We've seen this. There's a very famous quote from Tesla, 1892, inventor, engineer, and futurist. And here we have a, a nice example of the, of the golden ratio discharge. That will certainly give us the idea that, I, that the... Space is not static, Joe. A Latin phrase that translates to, although changed, I arise the same. And is invariant with center O. Ratio phi and angle pi over 2. Although changed, I arise the same. It's a world within a world within a world. Repeating, 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 that fundamental structure. And as a result, if we now start from the center, here, we, we consider it to be an expansion. So considering, set up a point, and it starts to expand out and expand out, and it expand, goes on, keeps expanding to whatever scale you want, from the microcosm all the way to combination of those two. Okay, so let's talk about electrical discharges because we're going to go on to have a look at what discharges are all about. So, well, we've all experienced lightning. 
results from a from very simply kind of accumulated charge imbalance between two regions. That's electrostatic discharge, say in this case between the, the, a cloud and the ground. So a high electric field creates an ionized electrically conductive region in an insulating medium. So, for example, air in a spark gap or an inert gas in a discharge tube. Dielectric breakdown is accompanied by a rapid discharge by an electric current emitting both light and sound. Ionization of the dielectric medium in coil discharge is what's called the swords discharge. So lots of straight streamers going out the top. And all other kinds of things. So th that's typically um, um, the kind of discharge you get from a lower frequency spark gap or disruptive Tesla coil. A very, you know, very nice fractal, looks very much like lightning. And then some of the other things in between. This is a very high frequency solid state Tesla coil. Looks like a, just looks like a candle flame. That's running at 16.5 megacycles. And another solid state Tesla coil, a more of a bush. Here's the burning bush. We saw very we saw that in the in the in the previous demonstration that we did earlier in the week. And uh, dual resonance solid state Tesla coil. Um, this is this is this double resonance from a dual resonance coil starts to produce combination of effects. So that is a scenario where, for example, the primary is also a resonant and the secondary is... Does that represent a better, a better version of the disruptive discharge? Yeah, it's just, it, it, it's just different. It's, it, it, it's just a different nature of the discharge. Um, but as you make systems more powerful, as generators become more powerful, then they're going to get whiter and hotter. This forward doesn't seem back doesn't go back but let me use this so now let's look at a different type of discharge so in the drive then you start to see these this ferns this hedge of ferns on the streamers here's another one exhausting some exhausting and but you see they follow a very similar pattern, and one, one of the things I also discovered is that they tend to follow a choreographed sequence, which is also interesting. It's almost like a dance. So they first go to the left, then to the right, then go out wide, then spiral together, and then start again, go to the left, go to the right. So th there, is a, there, is a, there is a sequence, this as well. There is an underlying pattern. It is showing a pattern which I found miraculous. I mean, what's, what's doing, what is the source of that? It's not that hard, actually, to create this. Engineering-wise, it's not that hard to make this. I'm going to show you exactly, when we get into the engineering deep dive, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Anyone could go home, and if we have a reasonable media, so we've got a parallel tuned resonance circuit. This is the, the single um, GU5B. The, it, has a, it has a force cooling underneath. It has that kind, it has the copper copper based anode there which is very suitable for for air what well, it was designed for air going through in this direction so coming um, up through the anode over the glass normally you'd have a chimney in the equipment it was originally designed we have a small chimney here and then pass over um, that metal with the holes is essentially the grid so it also provides cooling into the system from that system too and I've got it in Okay, so um, I don't want to hold you off too long to seeing the discharge. I know we want to see that. Um, but first of all, just for the people that are interested in the engineering of how this works and everything, I want to do um, a little bit of analysis of what's going on on the coil because I've talked about the parallel modes quite a lot and I would just like to show people how that looks and what you can do with the um, um, adjustments that you have here. So. Um, let me just go through um, what I have on the bench first of all, so that we understand. You are actually getting maximum pickup in the in the in the in the tickler coil, in the exciter coil, um, but you can see it in the vector network analysis. Uh, normally, I start with quite close to get it going, um, and then I see where the best position.
Okay, the glow has started here. Bring the outlet to the right place and simply plug back in the bottom end of the coil. There, that's the coil changed. Just check this is not still hot, it's a little bit hot. Get the straighter, we can check for variation. Okay, this has got a that's also adjusting the frequency a little bit. What we might just do also is we might just go up a tap. I think that's smaller. We go down a tap. Okay, so now there's not enough feedback. I could go up two taps, so to nine rather than seven. It's going quite well there. Since we're playing, let's go to 11. Too much. Now it's forcing. I'm going to leave that there in nine. It's quite good. You can hear the sound. It's smooth. It's not gone. Yeah, but it just blew the fuse. So in other words, we were right on the edge. It was pulling a lot of current, and it blew the it blew the fuse. No, no, it it, it won't. It's just too much current coming in. If I put if I put a, a replacement in here, uh, this is a 20 amp, I think. Yeah, exactly. No, it's a fast blow. So, well, I mean, I've demonstrated all of the aspects that I wanted to do um, here. That was, um, it needs another fuse in there because we got right to the edge of the band, the current, it has to really start pushing in order to, in order to do it and it draws a lot of current from the supply. This, current, this can go up to about 20 amps. Okay, that, um, that concludes nice. my presentation. Thank you, Adrian. We have a couple of questions from online, and then we'll take questions up here. Have, okay. you, ex have you examined the more sword-like shapes to see if they're non-golden spirals? In other words, could it be that the frequency affects the ratio of the spiral? Uh, that's actually a very good question. The, um, on the swords, I did get into a little bit of it earlier, um, but um, on this system, the sword is not...